Welcome everyone to this week's Force Friday. Um, we today are going to cover feet, right? We dealt with heads a few weeks ago and then we had hands and then we had a tree crash on the road <laughs> to and from my house. Um, I'm fine, I was nowhere near my house, uh, but where I live, ironically, the neighborhood has one street in and one, you know, one out and the tree happened to not only hit the power lines, but it also uh, crossed the road, right? So I was kind of stuck here for a few hours and my cellular is not anywhere good enough, I think, to hold a uh, Force Friday. So um, I was kind of stuck. So my apologies for last week. Um, yeah, so today we're gonna talk about feet, right? And a whole bunch of different tips and tricks on how to draw feet that we use from a force standpoint. I'm gonna be talking, I'll be heading it up with a lot of function conversation, just things for you to think about, you know, as you're drawing feet, because once again, you know, we're not here purely teaching you how to draw, um, but how to think, right? How to think about all this stuff, which will bring more meaning to your drawing and improve your drawing, right? A lot of, again, the art education out there, I think is just purely on the skill-based idea of drawing, but I've found over my 30 years of teaching experience that it's not just the skill, it's also how you think. And therefore you use skills to improve, use thinking to improve your drawing, right? The skills are really there as tools to represent your thoughts, right? So that's what we're gonna do today. Um, before we get started, uh, let's say hello to the gang. How are you doing, uh, Swanley? Well, yeah, good, glad to be back after last week a little hiatus <laughs> yeah <laughs> All right. and i would say hello to Mertunje, but it looks like we just have force force book covers <laughs> i'm here guys <laughs> oh you are there all right how's it going invisible. <laughs> yeah, yeah he's invisibility today he's got his invisibility right. ring on yeah maybe i'm trying some new invisibility paint or something <laughs> maybe you're wearing uh, the one ring that rules them all today see i'm getting visible but yeah like, but Oh yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Coming to us from another dimension today. You know, and his, his his atoms can't make up their mind on if they want to stay in the parallel universe or in this one. <laughs> Maybe interesting. Yeah. yeah. All right, so let's get to it. Um, let's see. Back to Photoshop. Um, as always, uh, if you enjoy the comment that you know we are presenting to you guys on this channel, then please hit the subscribe button. And uh, you, if you want to be notified, hit the bell, right? That'll tell you uh, what stuff's coming out. There's gonna be a lot more content coming out in the new year um, with the completion of my studio, uh, which I will begin uh, creating in about a week or two from now. So next year, I think is gonna be a very big year for us. Uh, so I highly recommend hitting the bell. Um, and I never ask this, but, you know, if you really do enjoy what we're teaching you guys here, then please share this channel, right? Like share this channel on Instagram, you know, share it on your Facebook accounts, on uh, Twitter and on TikTok. Uh, so you can inform other artists that we're doing this over here, right? I think that would be awesome. That'd be huge uh, support for us. And we'd really greatly appreciate it. Okay, so here we go, feet, right? Before I even get into all the stuff I put together, um, you know, feet, to me, I always just think of feet as like the workhorse, right? There's probably no part of your body that works harder than your feet. <laughs> You're like constantly on them, you know, day in and day out, uh, standing on your feet, balancing, jumping, running. Uh, yeah, I mean, our feet are, what, you know, what put the mileage on our body. They're the tires of the car. And uh, they're just constantly working. And they're kind of really a miraculous uh, device from uh, a mechanics uh, standpoint, you know? You know, we're talking about like the kinesthetics of what's going on. How is it active? What's the physicality of it, right? So what I tried to do today to help our brain just get into this place before Swanley and Mertunje take on more of the skill side of things is um, I wanna throw you some big ideas, right? Things to think about when drawing the foot. So for me, I always try to go really far, you know, for in, in any direction for me to better, uh, better understand the thing I'm learning. And I thought, well, what if we didn't have feet, <laughs> right? What would travel look like? And the closest thing I can come to is thinking about like a cane or even stilts or, you know, the pirate with the peg leg, 
right? Imagine if you had two peg legs, like what happens in that kind of situation? So there's lots of things that would get lost. Um, imagine the sort of uh, sturdiness of just having a pole at the end of your legs that you're walking on. Balance would be way more difficult, right? So balance would be harder uh, because you're only, you have a small surface area that you're trying to balance all your weight on. Very, very challenging, very challenging. Um, you would, you know, once you have that pole hitting the ground, there's nothing to absorb the weight of your body, right? Like hitting the ground. So that shock would move more strongly up into your knees and into your pelvis and your back. So if, I, I honestly think if we were built like this, you would see way more damage on the rest of the body, right? On the skeletal system of the body, people will probably wear out or blow out their knees way more. Like I said, forget about your pelvis and your hips and that ball and socket joint that you have in the pelvis. Uh, and like I said, your spine all the way up to your head, right? So I think that's another thing to keep in mind is the power of feet, you know, taking on that. Think about running and jumping, right? Like how difficult that would be. You'd basically just be swinging your legs back and forth on poles. Kind of reminds me of, um, I don't know if you guys have seen the Dark Crystal, but they have these uh, these riders. I forget the, their their specific name. Maybe one of you remember. Um, you know that the um, the Gelflings ride, right? It's like these, and they're basically on stilts, right? So their movement is fast because of the distance of their legs, the length of their legs. But there's no like jumping. You know, you don't see them jumping or running anywhere. Like if you did that, all of any kind of up and down motion to get any kind of height off of it would be handled really by like your scapula, right? Or trying to use the muscles of the arms and or of the legs um, as, a, as a system to try to get any kind of up and down motion going, right? So your feet play a huge role in that as well, you see? So not that great, not that great to walk around without feet. <laughs> Very challenging, you know, and to to have a third foot, quote unquote, meaning like a um, a crutch, let's say, uh, is actually really powerful. To just have a third point of contact, right? So you're going from bipedal to tri, right? And like a tripod, uh, way more balanced. We know that too, right? Things with three legs, like a tripod for your camera or a light system, right, is way more stable than something that's two because two only creates a straight line, easy to knock over. Three is where that stability comes from. Right? From, right. So our bodies, you'll, you know, you'll notice your, your feet are kind of longer in the front, right? There's nothing in the back at the heel. So you'll have a tendency to lean a little bit more forward than you will to lean back, right? Because of that situation of balance, right? So, you know, I always think of when I think about feet and legs and uh, the muscles of the lower leg, there was a guy named Billy that I, I went to high school with. I remember that we used to walk on the balls of his feet. In fact, I think I may have mentioned this even in uh, Force Fridays. And he had huge calves, you know, like because of that, because he just basically walked on the balls of his feet, which is constantly taking on this like springy kind of action. And that compresses, you know, when you're on the ball of your foot, you're contracting the gastrocnemius muscles, the calf, the calf muscles. Uh, you know, and his calf muscles were under constant tension, right? So it showed in his anatomy, right? So let's go through some other ones. So like I said, in a, in a sort of hidden way in the background here, what I want you to be aware of is when I try to learn something, um, I try to think of the extremes of that thing. You know, like what would the, this look like without this thing at all? What would this look like if it was, you know, tenfold, whatever this particular thing is, right? To get the extremes to help me better understand it. Because most things are not extreme. They're very subtle. So I, I use my creativity, right? My imagination to push the extremes. Okay. So two things, two very big things right off the top, which I kind of touched upon a little bit. Um, the first thing is the foot creates stability, right? It helps us balance. If you were on two poles, you would be teetering back and forth and back and forth all the time trying to create this stability. So, you know, it would look like this. So here's a great example I just grabbed from Google. And the difference in the center of gravity compared to having a small point on the ground versus having um, a wide base, All right? So this is our foot on the ground. This would be if we only were on stilts, right? So the massive amount of difference that would occur in that base relative to our center of gravity, right? 
kind of interesting. They call this neutral, neutral equilibrium here, I guess because of the weight of the sides, right? Here it's small and it's much wider. So the swing is greater compared to what it is over here, right? Oh, and you can see the, the um, because it's a cone specifically, they're pushing the center of gravity higher for the distribution of the whole cone where here it's lower, right? So it actually brings you closer to the ground, right? So the other piece um, is that our feet, this is one that I don't think we think of that much, but because we have this platform called our foot, it creates more friction, right? Friction is really important. That gives us this traction, right? If you're only on poles, again, the surface area is really small. And because of that, it'd be easy to slide. Imagine if you were on stilts and you were trying to climb up some rocks, as an example. That would be so challenging, right? So difficult to pull that off. But because you've got these, these planes, right, called your feet to like help grab onto surfaces, right? They, it causes traction or friction and really helps you move, right? Move over um, unstable ground, right? If, if the whole world were built like an airport floor, it'd be one thing, but it's not, right? Things go up and down or uneven all the time, right? And your feet really kind of grab that, you know, the shoes you wear kind of grab that because we have, you know, bending in our feet, right? Because we have our arch of our feet that all helps there be more flexibility in the feet to actually grab the ground in different ways. And that gives us traction. And as we know, of course, nowadays, you know, we have all of the most uh, modern conveniences of like the most high-end sneakers and so on to further create traction, right? So like a hiking shoe might be different than a running shoe as an example, right? So, yeah. And, you know, and you can cheat this, you know, as a kid, I remember always like, you know, wearing socks and sliding across hardwood floors, for instance, right? You know, it's like Tom Cruise and risky business, <laughs> right? So you can break down your own friction based on what you put on your feet, right? You're wearing socks or are you wearing hiking shoes, right? Okay, so don't forget balance and traction. It leads me to what I was just discussing, and that is the arch, right? The power of the arch. The power of the arch um, is, is a couple of things. Here, let's, let's talk about this. <clears throat> Try not to step on the toes, haha, -ha, get it, of, uh, of Swanley and Mutunje. But, um, you know, the arch, which is here on the instep um, of the foot, um, gives us some cantilevering action, right? Like we have, we have a bone here and it allows the foot to kind of move over this space, right? It allows it to come over this. And that causes all kinds of awesomeness in our legs due to our feet and how we run and how we move and how we jump and so on. So this arch really helps uh, with that, you know, with that idea, uh, the, the, the sort of physics and architecture behind this archway um, help there be bend, not only in the fact that we're cantilevering over this point, but even in the arch itself. And because of we, ha because we have this arch, there are muscles you know, that go across this arch that actually go from here to here that uh, stretch and contract over that span. And that also determines the uh, elasticity and therefore uh, the function of the foot, you know, and when that elasticity needs to go tight or when it stretches based on that archway, right? So again, just something to keep in mind, you know, that having this arch, uh, having these, these, two contacts basically on the foot, these main two contacts, cantilevering over, um, you know, over the, the ball. This is called like the ball of the foot. Let's just move over it, right? So, you know, and I brought in obviously architectural arches, but you know, they go from buildings to bridges. You can see the sense of structure and power that an arch has. Uh, an arch distributes weight, right? It distributes weight evenly across two points. So it's another thing that's going on with the arch of the foot, right? It's coming down on the heel, but the arch gives it more power to get to the ball of the foot. You know, when you're flat footed, I would imagine that that's going to put way more stress onto the middle of your foot and the bones in the middle of the foot because the curve itself innately based on the angle that your foot is cantilevering um, is giving it more strength, right? So a flat Imagine, again, if you had an arch rotating over that cantilever, right? This arch is going like this, 
versus if it was like this and you had a cantilever here and you had a straight ball, you know, board just going up and over, right? This would have way more stress in the center of it. I could see this collapsing and basically breaking its way inward based on how much stress is coming down on it. But this doesn't do it as much, right? This has more power because it's already pushing in. It's kind of pushing all of that uh, weight, that gravity further down more easily onto the top of the foot, right? So hopefully that further explanation um, helps. So you want to be aware of the arch and the power of the arch. So what does the arch also do? The arch gives us a sense of propulsion and spring, right? Because again, if you were only on a pole, there's no extra bounce down past the bottom of the pole. Your foot, again, cantilevers off of uh, the ball of the foot. And that's like having a little extra spring action at the very bottom. Now, I brought in this um, anatomical illustration um, because in my animal drawing book, I, I go into detail on this, right? So here, let's draw some, uh, some quick animal legs, right? So on a human being, you know, uh, you come down the leg, right? You have an ankle and you have the foot and it's like this, right? Here's the arch of the foot and it's like this, All right? So ankle, ball of foot, right? And the heel. <clears throat> well, as you draw um, mammals, this gets higher and higher. And that distance with that arch actually gets longer and longer. And that allows animals to have much more spring. Believe me, like my dog could easily clear like an eight foot fence from standing in a position and just crouching down and using her legs to jump up. And I, I can't clear eight feet with me just trying to swing my arms and jump off the ground, right? So that's happening because of this, because the spring is getting extended, right? So suddenly, you know, you have, let's say, um, so this is a human. And a, if you took like a bear or something like that, uh, we would all be considered plant -a grade, right? Plant, so it's like planting your foot down or your hand, it's flat. So a bear would do the same thing, by the way. Um, now we get to digigrade, which are cats and dogs as a quick examples. And they're, you know, they're like this right? All of a sudden, their, their body is built like this. So the ankle, which we have down on the ground, for them is always up in the air. You see that? So this is Billy from high school, <laughs> right? This is Billy. Billy walked around like a cat or a dog, basically, right? Ankle was always up off the ground. Um, and then you have, you know, you have a joint here, <clears throat> which is basically the ankle. And then you're going to go down into the toes of the feet. Well, guess what? You know, when you move to an ungulate, which is like a horse um, or a goat, right? This gets even pulled further off the ground. So now you come down to the ankle of a horse. You know, and now you have this really clear joint that's now also off the ground. <clears throat> All right, which here is closer to the ground. Here, now here it gets pushed off even further. Right. And then this is really just the toe. The other joint is right here from the foot. So what's happening is there's this constant escalation of getting off the ground, getting off the ground with the joint, which creates more spring. Every time something leaves the ground and comes up in the air, it's an opportunity for it to be able to bounce up and down, right? For it to go high and low. And that creates, it creates more and more and more and more spring action, right? So as springy as we are, we're still not even that springy, right? Cats and dogs can run faster than we are. Horses can run faster than we are. And most of that is really driven off of this, right? So keep in mind the power of the arch and the, the fact that you can lift your foot off the ground causes all this uh, spring action, okay? Now, by the way, um, we're talking about the foot today, but this works in tandem with the legs, the thighs bending, right? The fact that you can bend at your knee, you know, if you know how to jump well, then you also know that swinging your arms also gives you momentum, right? Gives you more height. When you see somebody in basketball take a layup, you know, to hit a shot and get off the ground, you could also use your other leg. So one leg is the one you're going to leap off of. But if you use the knee of the other leg, use that to swing up off the ground along with your arms. So you, you take almost 60% of your body, right? And try to use it to swing, to create a pendulum effect that's also gonna help you get off the ground along with your foot, right? So it's all working in unison to get height, okay? 
All right, so we want to remember spring. Now, I brought this in here just to make my point of how important springing is. And you can see all these different kinds of contraptions that are out there in the world, right? This sneaker is interesting from Nike just because it has this little rainbow here and it really calls out the arch of the foot, right? The power of the arch, right? Um, but, you know, there's these shoes out there and these kinds of shoes out there. You'll see this one on the left is kind of reminiscent of like a horse, right? This looks like an ungulate's uh, architecture, right? Like it's anatomy. So, you know, you'll see it again as humans from the sense of physics and a sense of understanding how other mammals work you know, scientists or inventors come up with these different contraptions, right, to give us those similar powers. And then I've never tried these. <laughs> I'm kind of scared to try them. Uh, I could see bouncing and just like falling right on your face, right? Um, but you can see here, this is indicative of how our foot works in having two arches, right? Because the archway causes this kind of spring action and it gives you strength, right? There's a strength in the arch. Um, that would cause a lot of up and down bounce here, right? So it's amplifying, this is really amplifying the physics and the kinesthetics of how the foot is designed and how it works, right? So interesting to keep in mind, right? <clears throat> All right, last but not least um, is shock, right? I talked about this a little earlier with imagine if you only had uh, poles, you know, sticking into the ground the rest of your body would take up that shock every time you ran, right? In fact, you know, again, the shoe industry keeps trying to absorb as much of that shock as possible because everyone tells you to run, you know, with heel through the foot down to the ball of your feet and then roll off the ball of your foot to your toes and so on. Um, me personally, I've actually never really run like that. I actually run more in the balls of my feet. It's faster, you're more springy and you're using the anatomy of your foot to get that spring action in there and it's faster you know i think if you're like a long distance runner i could see going heel to toe heel to toe heel to toe and more like sprinting or running quickly is more on the ball of your foot right you're not you're not going to see i think if you were to watch somebody doing the 100 yard dash they're probably more on the balls of their feet than they are on the heel of their foot you know it's faster and you're getting more spring out of it but anyway to get back to this it's absorbing shock the whole time as well you know most people that injure themselves again, in their back, in their knees, are people that walk heel heavy, you know, put all their weight into their heel and really push it and drop down on it and really don't use the rest of their foot that much, right? So I'm sure some of you in the audience do that. I have relatives that do that. I have friends that do that. And I always tease them about it because I hope that they change, you know, I just watch and they end up, end up getting stuff like plantar fasciitis, I think it's called, right? Where you get like bone spurs and you know, you end up like stretching muscles in your foot because of it. And then it causes knee problems. And I, I, I have direct relatives that are in those same situations. And they're the ones who, when walk around with socks, even you can really hear their feet, like slam the ground, right? Like really hit the ground hard. So, you know, it's, you're not using your foot to its full advantage, right? And you're shocking again, your way up through the body. So before I finish my segment, any questions that I need to answer? Uh, Let's see, <clears throat> land striders, yes, thank you, uh, Eden. <laughs> You'd get stuck in terrain a lot, no weight distribution from Edward, that is most definitely correct. Uh, the bottom of the shin bone that connects to the ankle looks like a wrench, yes, that is true. Studio tour, maybe, yeah, yeah, once it's all put together, so maybe by like spring of next year, maybe we'll do a studio tour. Uh, and that is it, okay, seems like no questions. Um, you know, some of you, I, I can see me sitting out in the audience and thinking, you know, I just want to learn how to draw feet. Why does this guy always talk about all this other stuff <laughs> at the front, you know, of these videos? But again, I promise you, the more informed you are about the function of things, the more your drawings are going to have a sense of realism and believability and function in them, instead of just drawing the shape of a foot, you know, and the structure of a foot. We really understand, want to understand how things work because that sensitivity, uh, that awareness, that understanding of the function is something that you do have the capacity to bring into your drawing, you know, which I'd like to believe, you know, the thumbnail here is showing, you know, it's like the idea of the stress in the heel, the stress over the top of the foot, going into the ball of the foot and then starting to get the squeezing and energy down on the toes. This one even more, right? Like uh, this is probably for me, this is one of my favorite feet drawing that I've done. 
Um, I really like the essing happening here of all this power driving down over this foot and then the skin going over the big toe. And think about all the stress on that big toe, right? All the stretch on the outside edge and just how much of that is hanging over the top of that ball of the foot and pushing down, right? And if you can't think it, you can't draw it, right? So in order for it to happen, you have to bring it to fruition. And the only way to do that is for you to have the thought, right? So that's why I'm sharing all this uh, sort of very high level information with you um, at the beginning of these videos, okay? All right, I guess with that aside, um, let me hand over some control to uh, Swenli and Mertunje. Okay, Mertunje, you are up and running and ready to go. And so are you, Swenli? Yes. All right, yeah, ready when you are. Right. All right, can you see the screen? Yes. All right, awesome. Uh, thank you, Mike, for sharing all the uh, cool insights about the, the feed. Now, uh, so once we actually understand like all the function, you know, uh, and you compare it to like some cool metaphors and pretty metaphors, then obviously what you wanna know is like how to use that information to draw the feed, right? Uh, so we'll just go with the same, thing right we will just like start with the the forces of it first okay then we just like go on and uh start to develop those forces into like structure um shape and anatomy like right? in the end um but today you know uh, we are really focusing on like i am focusing on my segment actually focusing on mostly telling you how to how to draw like some cool forces and how the forces are flowing into speed uh, and obviously like some some of the structure and Sony is going to cover um the shapes okay so then you will learn like how to use some cool shapes to like make your feet like uh, really dynamic. Mm -hmm. All right. So with that said, let's get into yeah, let's jump right in. So the first thing is uh, the forces of the feet. How does the forces of the feet work? Now there are like different templates for the feet, but uh, the mostly what you're going to be looking at. Um, oh, this is a structural point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what you're going to be looking at is something like this. Mm -hmm. Now, in the beginning, it might look a little bit uh, like, hmm, where are the forces? I don't see any forces. But, you know, as soon as I um, start to, like, I show you them. You know, so th basically, what the first thing that you want to know is, like, um, how does a force actually comes from the lower leg to the feet? Okay. So the force comes like this, right, into the feet, right? It hit, hits into the heel. Now, uh, the rule with the force that we usually know is, oh, force always travels the opposite way. It's like this, this, this. It always creates this like, zigzag pattern. So once it's hitting into the heel and it's like this fading here, then it starts to like go over the top of the feet there where do you see like an arc like this. And then it's going into the ball of the foot. Okay, so this is this part is again the ball of the foot here. And it's from the profile, by the way. Again, um, the inside. From the inside of the foot, you see like this arc happening, okay? And from the outside of the feet, you see the flatness, okay? Um, you see like the flat plane. So here, because you see the arc here, that's the inside of the feet. Anyway, uh, so continuing with the force, what do you, uh, from the top of the feet, you get to the ball of the foot. Uh, it does continue after that as well, okay? So you uh, basically continue with the, the knuckle, <laughs> right? The, the joint here in the thumb or, or the toe, I should say. And then it goes into the bottom of the toe and uh goes out right <laughs> basically into the into the floor uh or whatever surface you're in so this is how the forces work right now if i remove the drawing here you see yeah that's how uh, that's how the forces work in the profile of the leg okay or i should say the rhythms work in the profile of the leg now uh in the front um i have some photographs here but before that in the front, you can go for an outside inside outside. We usually go for an outside inside outside on the on the leg. Okay, so you basically it looks like this, right? Outside inside outside. You see again that zigzag pattern that's been created, and from the inside, uh, you have to follow the same rule, okay? Which is the zigzag rule of the force, okay? Like this, like this, like this, like this, okay? Boom, 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 boom. It's it's all like that pinball game, right? <laughs> Where the ball like goes opposite, you know. Ding, 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 you know, kind of like that. And so uh, because the force is on the outside of the, the calf here, okay? So uh, inside, uh, outside thigh, inside knee, outside calf, right? Is what we call it. Then it goes to the inside ankle, okay? After the inside ankle, um, again, I'm just going to do a zoom over drawing of this. 
So imagine this is the inside ankle and it goes to uh, outside of the foot, okay? And just like wraps around uh, like that, simply like this. Um, inside ankle, it's an anatomical landmark, so obviously you can, they can see, the, you can also see the outside ankle, but um, the outside ankle is lower, which I'm gonna talk about in the asymmetry section of this segment, okay? So, but for now, just remember, it just goes into the outside ankle, um, Sorry, uh, the inside ankle, and it just goes to the outside of the foot. Okay, so if you if I want to complete the the leg here, it would be like this: the outside thigh, inside knee, outside calf goes inside ankle, and to the outside foot. Yeah, kind of like this. And this is what you can use uh, while you are in the front view of the leg. Okay. All right. Then uh, you know after this, uh, usually you know what we do is like add the big toe here. You know, and really starts to like uh, build up the whole. Feet, you know, from, from here. But anyway, uh, so here I have some photographs that you can see, uh, and we can like uh, just draw over top of it and see how the forces are working. They see like how the force is coming uh, into the leg right here. Okay. Now maybe it's coming from uh, maybe it's coming from the the front of the feet as well. Okay. But it's gonna hit the hit the heel eventually. Okay. So it's it's hitting into the heel right here. And you can see this is a different view. It's as, uh, actually a back three fourth view of the of the feet. Uh, but the forces are still working in the same manner. So what you want to do is like, oh, you can go on the top of the feet into the ball of the foot. Uh, I know it's it's a little bit difficult to see here, but you can again go with the with the joint, okay, with joint of the toe, and then you can go into the ball of the foot. Uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, base of the big toe again. Okay, so this is usually a little bit confusing in some of the views, but. Um, yeah, you can actually go for these like main three forces, which is hitting into the heel, the top of the feet, and then to the ball of the foot. Okay, like that. Okay, I have another photograph here, really quick. So this is uh, from the side way, just like I showed you, right? It's coming up here, it's going to the top of the feet, ball of the foot. Right out here, this joint, it hits back again and goes into the bottom of the big toe, like that. All right, uh, so once we get forces out of the way, then we can talk about the arcs, you know. So Mike mentioned a little bit about the arcs and, yep, and that uh, arcs are very stable structures, okay? And that's why we, we build bridges like of the arc, like based on the arc design, right? Uh, ima ever imagine like why bridges are built like that? Well, and yeah, I mean, many of them are straight, but why, why like this, it provides like more structure, okay? And you see like the inside and the feet is built for the strength, you know, like to, it's built for, uh, because you you are putting a lot of pressure onto it, okay? It's built to like uh, hold the pressure. So, um, you know, so what happens is like, you see like there are a lot of arcs that's happening into the feet right here. And this is where this drawing actually would come in. <clears throat> Wait a second. Yeah, this, this drawing would come in. So you see like how many arcs are there in the feet? <clears throat> First arc that we see is right here, okay? Now this is what? I remember like how, we, how I talked about the, the front of the feet and um, you know, we, we are talking about the inside ankle. Well, uh, and one of you ironically called it um, the wrench, which uh, yes, I agree to that. It's, it's like a wrench and it's like this, okay? Now see, uh, there's an asymmetry here. Again, remember about the asymmetry, which I'm gonna talk about in a second, uh, in a minute. <laughs> Uh, but there's a asymmetry which happening at the at the wrench side of things. Okay, so this is the tibia bone. Okay, so many of uh, many of you might know about it. So there's like the tibia, and there's a there's a bone again on the outside of the feet, which is the fibula, right? So both are coming like attaching like this. But there's an asymmetry. So the inside ankle. This is the inside ankle. The inside ankle is higher, by the way. Okay, and the outside ankle is like lower. Okay, so it's it creates this asymmetry, but it creates this like grab uh, like a wrench, okay? And then from here, like you can you can start like create a piece, which is like this. So uh, this is how it works, okay? Again, you see there's an arc right here. The whole feet has this uh, very arky design to it, uh, which is again built to, you know, built for the pressure, okay? So you can put like a lot of weight in there and uh, it stays off, uh, it stays off fine. Okay? So, you see like the arcs in here as well. Uh, again, there's an arc, just like I said, in the uh, in the inside, okay, as well. So a lot of arciness like going all over across the feet. 
uh, and in like uh, front position as well and the side position as well. Okay. So there we go by the arcs. I'm just gonna turn this off. Those are some great drawings, Mutunji. Thank you. Yeah. Love really nice. <laughs> here, here you can see as well. See how the arc is. Uh, yeah, arc is being applied here and here as well. Okay. It's like a bridge, you know. Basically, it's like a bridge. Um, all right. Um, so with that said, we have a we uh, we have one more uh, concept here called pivoting. Uh, so there are two pivot points right here, uh, and this is a, a simple like uh, rhythmic uh, drawing of the feet. So we have the pivot right here as well in the ball of the foot, because this is where the feet would go like this. Okay. Feet would uh, feet would like follow this kind of uh, uh, what I can say like a raise. Okay, when when you're like putting the pressure onto the ball of the foot, you basically raise uh, the feet like this. Okay. Um, so I'm just gonna want to talk about the shape here, but um, this is where how it's happening. And there's uh, one more pivot here, by the way, as well. And obviously, this pivot is uh the in the ankle joint, okay. So you can move the feet uh on onto this pivot, like um, maybe not like too much here. Like you're gonna be uh you're gonna be experiencing a lot of uh, pain in there <laughs> if you're like doing it too much onto the other side, like to the top. If you're trying to rotate it, but if you're doing it at the bottom, I guess. Uh, we are having like more freedom to do. Feet is kind of limited in, in terms of like the sideways motion, right? You can't like rotate it just like the hand, like hand has a lot more dexterity to it and compared to the feet, like in terms of rotation, but obviously the function of two of these parts are very, very different, you know? And hand is built for dexterity and like holding and grabbing and so on and so on. And feet is like really worse with it. You know? <laughs> like feet is, you, you cannot like grab things uh, as easy as you would do with the hands okay so but field is uh built for uh, again like the pressure you put uh, you basically put a lot of weight okay or the whole weight of your body onto those small things there mm -hmm. at the end uh talking about asymmetry i i i think i already talked about it mm -hmm. but uh here it is again so the inside ankle right and this is the outside ankle right like that that's the asymmetry that we got Mm. Uh, uh, the mistake that people usually do is uh, just make it very symmetrical. So usually, you know, people just draw it like this, like this, and it's like this, like that. And uh, you see, like they are level right now. This is wrong. Okay, so you want to make this asymmetrical, asymmetric thing happen. Um, connection of the leg to the feet. I think I also talked about this. You know, <laughs> while I'm uh, while I'm like uh, explaining that. So basically, it is more that you're considering more of the lower leg. But uh, what's happening, let's say if you're coming from the back of the calf, you can actually go into the top of the feet and you can just go directly into the ball of the foot, okay? So, so uh, for example, if this is the position uh, that your, your feet is uh, handling right now, right? So what you can do is like, you can directly come from the calf and this is C where you see the contraction of the calf. <clears throat> you see the contraction of the calf right there, okay? So it come up like this, you can go directly into the ball of the foot. And then, uh, yep, this is the connection. This is one of the connections. There are like so many other connections that you can have. Uh, you can basically come up from the front of the shin, okay? And you can have your feet flat like this. And this is the same connection that I was talking about before, which is like this. Um, yep, so those are some of the connection of the leg to the feet and how you would flow with the forces and while, while drawing it. Okay. This is important, by the way, because, uh, yeah, if you're just like making making the foot, but it still helps you like uh, understanding like, where the force is coming from. Is it coming from front of the feet, uh, front of the leg, or is it coming from the back of the leg? All right. Now we have the uh, finally have the structure to to our feet. Okay. So here's one drawing. Uh, you see again, I'm like using a lot of arcs, and I actually before that I should show you this. So here's a um, here's a bone. Um, bone and this is phalange bone okay <laughs> now if you don't know like what a phalange is the phalanges are basically this part of the finger or i should say toes here <laughs> in this case uh which means that um so as you can see these are like different tones okay and this this part this uh teal part is basically called tarsals right in the feet is called tarsals 
And the T is actually replaced by a C when we're talking about hands. So instead of a T, we would use a C while we're talking about the hands. I think we covered it last week. Yeah, I, I think I covered some of the anatomy a little bit, but uh, instead of tarsals, you would call it carpals in case of uh, hands, okay? And uh, yeah, in case of hands. Now here, uh, we are using the T, tarsals. This uh, light blue one is metatarsals, right? So in, in the fingers, it will be metacarpals, but here it's metatarsals. Tarsals. And, and the remaining ones, which are usually what you see as like uh, the separation, okay? The toes or the fingers, uh, these are called phalanges. Hope I'm spelling it right. Phalanges. Yeah. So the, uh, uh, the orange one here, like these are called the phalanges. Um, so the, uh, the bones that I'm showing here, that is actually the phalange structure. Now, uh, see how I'm progressing through the structure within the bones. The one, one of the main thing while coming in structure, the first thing you need to be aware of, obviously you need perspective for that because we are usually using the boxes, but, uh, then you obviously need to jump in pretty quickly to the, um, you know, to the turning edges. Okay. Turning edges is obviously uh, very simple. It's in the name, by the way. So it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, the turning edges is a plane, okay? Like where the plane is changing. So you see like this is the top and this is the side. Uh, so this edge would be called the turning edge, okay? So the turning edges here, you see like how we are, how I'm using the block in the very beginning. I'm just like cutting an arc here and I'm putting a turning edge, which would give me the volume. And we are like progressing through its designs and like adding more like bony details to it, okay? Uh, and that's how, that's how you have to like study as well, okay? So it's a cool trick if you want to like study bones and things like that. Don't just go or like copy the bones, but understand the structure and where the turning edge lies, okay? Um, all right, so once we are done with this, now we can come back to this drawing again. Uh, you see, again, there's an arc in here, there's an, and there's an arc in here. This bone is pretty important, by the way, the the calcanus, I think it's called. Uh, well, <laughs> so uh, it is the heel bone, okay? In common terms, this is called, this is the heel bone. And you see like there's a cylinder on top, top here, by the way. Okay, so I'm just gonna move this. You see there's a cylinder on top here, right here. And this is what um, makes the foot joint, uh, foot joint work, okay? So the wrench would come off, okay? Wrench of both the bones would come off. It would attach like, this okay again the inside ankle is higher the outside is lower okay so we want to keep that asymmetry in mind and there we go see how this leg wrench uh is you know being, being connected to the feet now we see that's why you can't like rotate your feet uh you say like like solely right <laughs> like you have to like rotate your whole lower leg and that's also kind of limited it's not like uh it's like a great range of motion that you can like rotate it some models can do i have seen that but that's like pretty rare i would say but mostly the motion is going to be like this okay you can you can keep it at, you can rotate it at the top or you can rotate it at the bottom a little bit as well right you, you can re definitely rotate more at the bottom than at the top so uh this one is greater this one is uh, kind of limited as well. All right, so with all that in mind, we have some we have some drawings in here. I have, I have a couple of minutes, so I'm just gonna give some demo here. All right, um, so here, um, the force, obviously the before starting to draw it, the first thing uh, you would go for is the forces of the feet. Hmm? So here, uh, the force is really coming off from the front of the, front of the feet and basically the whole leg, I, I, I guess. So here we go, that it's coming from the front. Just gonna raise that one. Yeah, it's coming from the front. And see how it's like switching and it's uh, switching to the ball of the feet here, just like this. I'm putting a lot of pressure there because uh, there is, <laughs> there's a lot of pressure. And then, um, yeah, I'm switching to the top here, like this joint and I'm switching to the bottom, okay? which is like that. Mm, and there we go, you know? So this is all the forces in coming into the ball of the foot and it's like going like this and hitting it right here. Uh, and same with the fingers. Uh, yeah, you would follow the same thing as we followed in the fingers. And so the fingers, we, uh, fingers I told you that we will start from the, the forces usually at the top 
and then it switches to the bottom uh, in the very last joint because in the in the top there is a nail okay like this now same thing goes for the toes as well okay you want to come like uh come like this and you switch at the bottom right here uh but in the finger we do have an exception as well uh, obviously when the finger goes like this mm, how would i show you i don't have my camera even today <laughs> but uh you imagine like you're pushing your finger from the top okay so your finger goes like this mm? And in that case, uh, the force on the finger switches to the bottom. Okay, so the complete finger would have the the force like this. Okay, at the bottom, and this is actually happening right here. I guess you know in the in the toes. So the force is just going, um, just force is just going this way. Basically, it's the same rhythm. Okay, it's the same rhythm like this, and uh, it's happening with the uh, the middle toe here, but uh, with the, all the other toes, I think you can just switching switch back to the top and into the bottom right here. Kind of like this, and you see, like you have a uh, pretty good uh, setup. You know, then you can like put structure on top of this, uh, and obviously use uh, Swen Lee's knowledge, what he's going to share with you after after me in a minute. Um, then to just like make these uh, make these foot drawings. Mm -hmm. Now, if I want to talk about the structure a little bit about this foot, um, I would definitely say it's. Um, I'm just gonna throw in a little bit of forces here really quickly. Yeah. Talking about a little bit of structure onto onto this foot right here, you see how um, you see what <laughs> uh, yeah, just like this, you know, you see like the like the bones in here, like how this is going into here, but but the first thing is obviously the forces, okay. Once you're done with it, then you can just like uh, put in like let's say some toes in there. Okay, see how I'm like putting this toe here that i'm not making it super accurate here but kind of like this be aware of the turning edges okay. be aware of the turning edges right here see this is the front plane the top plane this is the side plane okay all right i guess uh that's right on time or a little bit more than time <laughs> i want to give suddenly some like fair chance to do uh some awesome demos for you all right. That was great, Matunje. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Beautiful drawings. Great information. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Making life easier for for Swendy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's talk a bit about the shapes. So let's start with the side view. Now, Matunje did a fantastic job showing you guys the forces. So force always comes first. You know, we're talking about shape design and force drawing. It's called force shape. The word force comes first. So it's pretty easy and straightforward. Once you can find the uh, the forces, then at the opposite side of each curve is basically a straight. So let's go with the shapes from like big, very big, as big as we can to small. So if you look at the side view of, of the foot, the biggest shape that we can see is, is basically this one. You know, you have this large arc at the top and it's pretty much straight at the bottom. You know, so this is our biggest shape that you can start with. And then if you want to break that down even further and be a bit more specific, we can say, well, like Tunde showed you, again, force can come. In this case, I think it comes from from like the, the calf, you know, and it flows into the arc and into the toes. You know? So we can say, well, these are our straights. We have the heel back here, of course, as an extra support. Otherwise, we wouldn't have balance. So we have our directional forces. Let's quickly draw some arrowheads here. Now, so we have our directional forces and at the other side, is the straight now straight is relative because again it doesn't have to be like a rigid straight line it could be a lesser curve as well so in any case it's straighter than the curve side you now same here this is an arc so it's not going to be like a perfect straight uh this is a lesser curve you know so we have we have the forces we have our straight lines so let's look at the foot as a whole to start with and then we will um we will look at the toes in more detail 
Now, talking about the ankle joints, one important thing to be aware of is that the ankle joints, like if we have the lower legs here, you know, so this would be the straighter side, this would be the curve. Notice that the ankle joints gets wider. You now, so this tapers and then the ankle joints starts getting wider before we connect into the foot, you know, and I often see students missing this part and the foot looks unnatural, you know, because in reality, the joint right here gets slightly wider and then it flows into the foot. So important little idea to, to be aware of, to make the transition a bit more uh, realistic. So that's the side view. So let's take a look at the, at the front view. Again, as you guys saw before, force comes from, from the outsides into the inside ankle. And then we go over that arc to, to the outside foot. So again, we go, we're focusing on like the simple abstract shapes. So I'm not going to the exact details at this point. Now, so the curve is here and all the way out here. So that means that now we have our straights on this side. We have our straight on this side and we have a straight on that side. Now, so this gives us our simple four shapes. And one good way to remember that the curve is on the outside is to think about the sole of a shoe. Now, so basically you have a force curve. Change colors here. So the force curve would be out here. You know, and this would be this would be the, the straighter side in here. You know, so same idea in um, in the front view of the foot. And then we would have, of course, the back view. Now the back view works pretty much the same as the front view. It just happens that we see more of the heel, but force is still coming from the outside calf. We can see a very clear force curve here, uh, hitting that inside ankle. And we still go over that arc to the outside foot. You know, again, so the, the shape, so this would be the straight in this case. Notice that this is relatively flat. Now, so this would be the straight. This would be our straighter side. And this would be our straighter side. You know, so it just happens that once you get into the details, you uh, you draw what's actually there. You have to draw the heel and how you actually see the shape of the foot. But in terms of the straights and curves, is the same uh, pattern as what we see in the front view. And then, of course, we have the three-quarter view. In this case, the force, the rational force seems to be coming from the outside. We can see like a very clear arc. You know, so from here, we could flow down into, a, into that arc, or into the heel, I mean, then into the arc. And to keep it simple, let's say we go out here. Now, so we have our forces. That means that this is a straight. Uh, this is a straight. Now, this is the, the straighter side of the shape. And let's do a quick review on the toes. So, like we Tuna showed you earlier, it's pretty much the same um, like rhythm as with the uh, fingers of the hand, which we did in the last stream, meaning that you have one direction of force over the top and one at the bottom uh, of the tip of the toe. You know, and again, at the opposite side of the curve, the opposite side of the curve is your straight. You now, so for the big toe, the big toe just has like two, uh, two parts. And the other ones have three parts. So if you look over here, for example, you can see that very clearly. So let's zoom in a little bit. And let me drop this down so you can see it. So for the big toe, the rational force here and into the tip of the toe. Now, so these are our curves. Like this is straighter. 
this is trader. This is the like the insertion point. You can even add some form in here. And for the other ones, notice that it's basically the same pattern. It's just that we have three uh, three segments, three parts, but we still have one four scale for the top and one at at the bottom at the tip. And notice that this is very straight, you know. And our other straights are like hidden back here. You know, so notice that the other toes pretty much uh, one analogy I like to use is stairs. You know, you have like the the steps of the stairs going there. You know, this one is being squashed on the bench, of course, but it's the same uh, same idea. So we have one curve here. The the tip is kind of like hidden. It's relatively short. You know, so this would be a very uh like very little straight here at the top and then you would have the straighter line here at the back no so very simple in their design actually and that makes it easy to to remember at least as a starting point you know as you're drawing uh, uh feet, especially when you're drawing from imagination as well do you have a question swenling um, mm -hmm. Ed says, Ed says, when you're first blocking out your figure, are you starting like this and then carving out the details afterwards? Uh, yes, that's a good question. So that's what I'm going to show next. Great. So in drawing the foot, you can start just like with the hand we used the, the analogy for midden. You can think of a sock, you know, just make sure that it's forceful because you could draw a stiff sock shape. But think of a forceful sock, meaning that first can are the forces, then at the opposite of each uh, curve is a straight. You know, like here we start going a bit more uh, organic and, and real with the foot. But you want to start pretty abstract. You know, so you get the forces, get a shape, get um, some wrapping. You know to help you with the form we could even we could even add uh the turning edge in here meaning where do we go from the front to the side same here where do we go from the top of the foot to the side plane of the foot and notice that it starts narrower and it gradually gets wider you know so we would have like a clear a clear plane sitting in here Know, and after that, the next step would be to uh, to go into the smaller shapes. So let's say we we start like roughing out this foot with this forceful sock. The next step that I go into is like separate, dividing the toes, and the trick I use for that is I separate it into. Uh, you can zoom in a bit more so you can see it better. I separate it into the big toe and the other four. You know, so I'm just thinking about the uh, like the knuckle line for for the toes in a sense where they connect. You know, so we have we have this shape and we have this shape. Now I'm keeping it simple now. I'm not going into the, like the specific rhythm scan, working from the general to the specific. Now, so we have these two shapes, and then this shape I separated in two because I know there are four toes that has to fit in here. You know, so we separate it into two, and this big shape here we separate it in two, and we cut these in half again. You now, so this gives you a good starting point for the toes, and from here you can you can start adding more detail like. Uh, Notice that the padding, I grab the other color. Notice that the padding of at the side of the pinky toe like sticks out further, you know, so it's not like a perfectly straight line because of the weights, this like squashes and bulges out. So this would stick out here at the sides, you know, so it sticks out further than the actual toe itself, you know, and from here you can start adding. Uh, like the rhythms, I know that there's a curve at the top and it's a straight, you know, and I can I can do the same for for the other toes, you know, and if you do a quick sketch, 
a very easy way to show structure is with the toenail because you can of course go in here and draw the turning edges but if you just if you just draw the toenail it shows you because it sits on the top plane of the toes so the toenail indicates the turning edges you know it shows you that this is the top and this is the this is the front plane you know and the same goes for for the other toes you know so if you just visualize where the toenail is it will give a hint at at structure notice that this one is is tilted you know so this toenail would be at an angle whereas the other ones are straighter you know and from here you can start adding details and get more specific like you can see that the tip of the toes are getting a bit wider you know so you have you have like this uh, smaller cylinder and then you have the tip of the toe like squashing here and you have the you have the toenail you can add some surface lines to hint at uh like the the joints you know so the key is to start simple start with very simple forces add the straights add some volume and then bit by bit you get more specific it's like sculpting with clay you know you start with a chunk of like generic mass and then you start massaging it and massaging it until it looks like what you want it to look like all right this was my part hopefully this was helpful to you guys all right thank you Swami. that was awesome yeah you're welcome all right guys um that's it that's it for today my dog says hello by the way <laughs> <laughs> Here's our digigrade animal. Although he's missing an ear, there it goes. So uh, we will see you all. We'll see you next week. Um, if you're not aware of this, by the way, uh, next Friday, I will be at CTNX. Uh, it's an animation convention in Burbank, California. So if you're into animation, you want to you know, meet people from the industry, get a job in the industry, they're all there looking at portfolios. Uh, it's going to be going on all of next weekend. I'll be there doing some workshops and some lectures, and I will have a booth there. So if you want to meet me in person, uh, come on out, right? Um, it's, you know, very fairly priced, and there's going to be some, like, awesome reveals for, like, new uh, animation and movies and stuff coming out. Uh, so, yeah, come check it out, right? Burbank, California, it's the home of the entertainment industry. So uh, Hopefully, I will see you all there uh, next week. We're going to figure out what the Force Friday is going to be. I don't know. If, I might do a walk around of some of the uh, of the um, the convention. Okay. All right, guys. Take care. Again, thank you, Swami Matunje, and we will uh, we'll see you guys next week. All right. Bye bye. See bye you guys. guys. See ya. Take care. All right. We're out.